Cool, so let's wrap up this concept marathon with a very nice exercise. I'm going to go to the exercises package and I'm going to create a new Scala class called my list. And here we're going to create an abstract class which describes a list of integers. So here, my friends, you are going to implement your own collection. This exercise is pretty simple, but very challenging to think about in the first iteration. So I'm going to give you some indications. This list will be a singly linked list which holds integers, and it will have the following methods. The method head will return an int, which is going to be the first element of this list. Another uh, method is going to be tail, which is the remainder of the list. I'm pretty sure you've implemented your own lists in other languages and you've implemented a singly linked list. So this will hold the pointer, if you will, of the remainder of the list. Okay. Uh, some uh, small methods like is empty, which returns a boolean and uh, returns is this list empty. Then we are going to have a method called add, which receives an integer and it will return a new list with this uh, element added. Okay. And I also want you to override a special method called toString, which returns a string representation of the list. Right, so I want you to add these methods into uh, or more or however many you uh, decide subclasses or subtypes of this my list abstract class. But first, decide on the method signatures for uh, each of these uh, methods and then implement them in their subtypes. Now, pause the video and give it a good think and try to implement this and I will see you in a couple of seconds where I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I hope you did the exercise. This is very important that you uh, give it your own shot first before jumping into a solution. But right now, I'm going to show you how to do it uh, and you'll be surprised of how easy it is. So let's decide on the method signatures first. So def head will return an int because it will return the first element of the list. Now, the tail will return the remainder, which is of type my list. Now, is empty will return a boolean, of course. We'll return a boolean. The add method, uh, let's call this element, which is of type int and will return a my list. All right, because this uh, we'll return the new list with the element added. Now, if you remember the concept, this is an immutable list because, uh, as you see, we're not modifying this instance. We're, uh, we'll return a new instance whenever we want to modify it. And two string I'm going to implement later, but let's focus on these four first. Okay, so my list is an abstract class and I want to uh, extend it by two subclasses, the empty list and the non-empty list. The empty list is going to be an object. So object empty extends my list. Okay, so objects can actually extend classes, but of course we need to supply the appropriate methods. So let's actually copy these and paste them here and let's implement them. For now, I'm going to give it an implementation of, watch what I'm writing, question, question, question. This is an expression returning nothing, if you paid attention to the last couple of minutes. This guy returns nothing and when this method is called, this guy will throw a not implemented error because we'll implement them later, all right? So I'm going to supply question, question, question for all of these. Okay, so we have the empty list. I also want a non-empty list. So I'm going to define a class called cons, which extends my list. Now, the cons class will have two parameters. It will have the uh, head, which is an int, and a tail, which is an int. So cons will actually uh, compose a value with some other list. 
This is what a linked list actually means. It's composed of an element and the rest of the list. Okay, so let's paste the method definitions here and uh, let's give them uh, default implementations with question, 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 so that we actually uh, implement them in a minute. All right. All right, I switched to presentation mode so that you guys can more easily see what I'm writing. And let's move to the empty object, which is the easiest to implement. Now, the head and tail method for the empty object um, don't really make sense. So uh, there's no head and tail to return. Now, in if in your implementation you return some kind of negative one or not a number or min value or something like that and null for tail, that's also an acceptable implementation. But in this case, let's just crash the program with an exception. So let's throw new and uh, let's just say no such element exception. Throw expressions are expressions which return nothing if you paid attention to the last few minutes when I discussed the nothing type. And we're going to discuss uh, throwing and catching exceptions later in this section. But uh, just for the long story short version, uh, if you call the head method on the empty list, this will crash your program with this exception. So I'm going to copy this implementation and I'm going to paste it here in the tail implementation because tail does not make sense either for the empty list. Now the is empty method is very simple. It will return true because this is the empty list and the add element will turn the empty list into a cons list. So this is going to return new cons with the element as the head and the tail is going to be this object, the empty list. Oh, the compiler complains because of course the cons takes a my list as a tail. So I said one thing and wrote another. Okay, so the empty list is already implemented. Now the cons list uh, is also pretty simple because the head is going to be the head parameter. The tail is going to be the tail parameter that I used when uh, constructing cons. The is empty method returns false because by definition it's not empty because it, it contains at least one element. And add also creates a new cons with this element that I receive as a parameter and this object as the tail. So this is basically it folks. In just two minutes we have a fully functional linked list. Let's just test it. So I'm going to create an object called uh, let's say list test which extends app. This is a Scala application and let's just create a val uh, let's say list which is a cons or new cons with one and empty. And let's just try to print list.head. All right, so if I right click and run this, I should see the value one in the console. Of course, because the head method is this guy, which is this guy, the parameter that I used when constructing cons. Now, of course, I can actually have lists with many elements. So if I, instead of empty, use another cons with two and then another cons with three and empty, this is a linked list with elements one, two, three. So if I say list.tail.head, then this will print the number two here because list.tail is this guy right over here and its tail and its head, sorry, its head, it's two. So if I right click and run this, I should see the value two in the console, right? All right, now let's test the add method, for example. So if I try to print line list.add the element four and then print its head, then I should see the element four because adding an element actually adds it to the head. So uh, if I right click and run this, I should see the value four here, of course, to the console. All right, so all our methods basically work. I'm not gonna test is empty because they are, actually let's do that just uh, for the sake of it. So list is empty. This will return false because it's um, by definition a non-empty list. Right, now let's go ahead and implement the two string method. First, I'm going to define a protected method 
uh, print elements, which just prints the elements in order with a space in between them. And this will return a string. And the toString method, I'm going to say override def toString. This returns a string. And the default implementation in the my list trait directly is going to be, um, let's say, a square bracket plus another square bracket for closing. And in between, we're going to print elements. Print elements plus. Okay, so open uh, square bracket, then print elements, then closed brackets. Why I chose this implementation is because um, print elements will actually delegate to the subclasses implementation when printing out the elements. So if I define a list and then I call the toString method on it, the print elements method will then call the appropriate print elements method in the appropriate subclass for it. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I define the print elements method which returns a string and then the implementation should be the empty string for the empty list. But for the cons, the implementation is going to be slightly different. So def print elements, which returns a string. And in this case, let's say that if the tail is empty, then we just return the, the head. Okay, otherwise just uh, the head plus a space plus tail dot print elements. So this is a recursive method which lists every single element in this non empty list by calling print elements recursively on the tail. Then if I print the list dot to string, then this to string will go to the to string method in the trait which calls the print elements method, which is then derived by these two implementations, right? So the appropriate print elements method will be called later, which is a polymorphic call. I should actually paste this here because print elements is a polymorphic call. Then if I print list to string, then to string will call print elements, which in turn will call the print elements from the cons class because list is a cons, right? So if I print list to string, then I should see the elements one, two, and three in order. So if I right click and run this, the compiler complains because the method print elements cannot be accessed in exercises dot my list. Well, why is that? Well, that's because I'm accessing the print elements uh, method on an external object, but not on this object. Right. So I actually need to kill the protected um, uh, modifier here. So if I right click and run this, then it should be fine. All right, so we have the string representation one, two, three. So again, why does this work? Well, that's because the to string method is actually called in the abstract class right over here. And this calls print elements, which is then overridden in the class cons. So print elements will be called from here. And the recursive call actually returns this string one space two space three, which is then concatenated with the square brackets in the to string method. Now, you may wonder why the override keyword here in the to string method. Well, to string and equals and hash code are methods that are present in the any ref class. So I need to override it. All right, people, this is a fully functional list and we're going to expand it in the rest of the section and possibly beyond it. So keep this exercise uh, handy. All right, so let's recap. We've gone through a lot of things. So we started with the fact that Scala offers class-based inheritance with the simple extends keyword. And we also discussed about access modifiers, private, protected, and no modifier, which by default means public. You, we also discussed about constructors and the fact that we need to pass in constructor arguments to parent classes whenever we need them. We discussed about overriding members and methods. We discussed about super, about reusing 
uh, values and methods from parent classes. We discussed about preventing overrides with final on members or classes and about sealed classes. And we also discussed about abstract classes and traits. We also discussed how classes and traits are different and about multiple inheritance by mixing in multiple traits in the same extension scheme. All right, I'm Daniel. If you've managed to get so far, I am proud of you. You already acquired some powerful tools at your disposal, and we're only going to get more badass starting in the next video.